right, it's that time again. What time is it? What is Bible study time? What you say? Embrace Hope International. 5613 Rockfish Road, Hope Mills, Hope Mills, Hope Mills. You know, down there by the lake. Yeah, I say that because I don't want you to end up in Rayford. So we're on that end of Rockfish Road. 5613 Rockfish Road. Come on out and join us. Come on out and hang out with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on out and hang out with us. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a good day to serve the Lord. This is a good day to give Him praise. This is a good day to realize who you are, where you're headed, and what's going to be done for you and to you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What time is it? It's Bible study time. You know, anytime I get the opportunity to talk about God, it just makes me feel real good down inside. It just makes me feel real good because I know we serve an awesome God. I know we serve an on-time God, and I know he's right there with us and for us. And so thank you, Jesus, that we're here now. Thank you, Lord, that today is the day that you're going to allow us to just learn about you, educate ourselves about you. Wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get an understanding. Oh, it's so good. It's Bible study time. What time is it? It's Bible. Yeah, it's just something about Bible study that just brings the joy out of me. Because anytime that I can learn some more about Jesus, anytime I can learn some more about who I'm serving, anytime that I can learn some more about how I'm going to get through what I'm going through, through who I'm serving, Come on now, we're not serving a higher power. We're serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, it's into his name. Every knee shall bow, and at the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess. Don't tell me about no higher power. Call his name. They call your name, call his name in the name of Jesus. Listen, turn in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Zephaniah. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's down there with Hagar and all of them, yeah. It's right beside Zechariah, Hagar. Now I want you to go to Zephaniah. Yeah, we're going to talk about this a little bit tonight. I want you to go in Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Zephaniah. Go in Zephaniah, right next door to Hagar. Yeah, don't go towards Zep uh, Zechariah. Come on back to Zephaniah. <laughs> yeah, it'll get you. Yeah, it'll get you. It'll get you. Okay, let's go to the other side of that thing. You know, there's Amos, and then there's Habakkuk. Uh oh you got Habakkuk on one side, Hagar on the other side. Come on, let's go there. Come on, let's go there. I got a word for you. What? Tonight. Got a word for you tonight. Yeah, we're in Zephaniah. And go into the third chapter of Zephaniah. Zephaniah, go into the third chapter of Zephaniah. As we begin to move like never before. As we begin to learn what's going on with us and how things are happening to us. But most of all, I want you to I want you to realize that a promise has been made to each and every one of us. A promise has been made. A covenant has been made. A blood covenant has been made. Hey, listen, I'm from Rosemary Street. Uh, yeah, Rosemary Street off Mercerson Road. We got some little shirts made right here. Uh, back together again, Rosemary Reunion. So I thought I'd, you know... Put Rosemary's shirt on tonight. That's where I came from. So I want you to see. We're back together again. All right. But listen, but listen, but listen. We're in Zephaniah chapter 3. And I want you to hear me tonight. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me pray. Let me pray. Let me pray. Let's bring God into this situation. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are and for what you're about to do in this house. God, I thank you that you are an awesome God. You're an almighty God. I thank you for allowing me tonight, Lord God. To sit here and, and, and disciple your word, Lord God, as you have downloaded into my spirit. And so I thank you right now for being God, an everlasting God, a true and living God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you now, Father, for what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3. We're going to try to go through verses 14 through 20. But I want you to get a title for tonight. And if I had a title for you tonight, it would be God promised restoration. What you say? God has promised us restoration. Now remember I told you at the first beginning of this year, he said aggressiveness, which means confidence. And then he talks about your goal, making your goal. He's talking about aggressiveness, progression. And progression seems to be 
to meet your goal. So now, what am I talking about from the beginning of the year is confidence and meeting your goal. But watch this now. January, February, March, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're now moving out of the third month of this year. And we're moving into the fourth month. So in the fourthness, God is telling us that I have promised you restoration. So it doesn't matter what you have gone through, God has taken you through and he's beginning now to restore some of the things that you've lost. Restore some of the things that you should be blessed with. Restore it, restore it, restore it. In the name of Jesus, restore it, restore it, restore it. God is about to restore some things tonight, saints. I want you to hear me tonight. I want you, whatever distraction you have, get rid of that because that distraction is trying to prevent you from hearing what pastor is about to tell you tonight. And I want you to get rid of anything that's going to cause you to wonder about and think about it. More so than what I'm about to tell you tonight. Boy, God has downloaded, young lady, God has downloaded some information into me tonight. And I got to bring it to you. And you know what we say uh, in brain. So I got to give you the uncut version of what's about to happen. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I got to give you the uncut version. And so with that, I want you to understand that God is perfect. Yes, I said it. God is perfect. So in saying that in Zephaniah, hear me now. Hear me now. Zephaniah 14, uh, uh, chapter 3, in the 14th verse. Remember now, Zephaniah is in between Haggai and, uh-oh, let's go back, Pastor, let's go back. And Habakkuk is in between Habakkuk and Haggai. And you right there with me. I don't want you being Zechariah and trying to figure out what Pastor's talking about. Now, nah, get over there and Zephaniah. Yeah, and look at chapter 3 and verse 14. He says, sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad. And rejoice with all your hearts, O daughter of Jerusalem. Now, he says, sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. He's saying now, it's time for you to shout. Shout with a voice of triumph. Because you have inside of you a deadness. And this deadness is causing you to, to, you know, when something dies, it has a tendency to, 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 to it, it begins to go away. It, it begins to deteriorate. It begins to have something about it that's just not right. It tends to have a smell. So there's something inside of you that has come against you that's causing your spirituality to be, re, to be uh, checked. Cause your spirituality to be checked. Why? Because she keep coming at me. He keep coming at me. Circumstances and situations keep coming at me. So now it's causing me to kind of want to put some things in check. So now, but 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 God said that when you begin to shout, He says, Shout, O Israel. When you begin to shout, when you begin to open your mouth, when you begin to praise God, when you begin to shout, you are creating inside of you living waters. Because he said rivers of living water shall begin to flow out of your belly. So what's happening is there's something that's come against you, whether it be a circumstance or situation, him or her, it is causing, it has caused your spirit to, to yearn. For Jesus, but it's something about you inside that's saying, hey, I, I, I can't get this thing to work, Pastor. It seems like I, I, I miss Jesus in my life. What you mean by that, Pastor? You know, when you first got saved and you could really hear God talk to you, things was beginning to be real clear to you. But now it feels like God has walked away. It feels like you're not as important as you used to be. It seems like things is not working like it should. See, that's what that decay is. That decay is trying to prevent you from receiving the Spirit of God. But what I'm telling you tonight is, now you're going to have to shout. Shout with a voice of triumph. And know that this thing inside of you, it has to be relived and renewed and regenerated and replenished. It has to be relived, renewed, regenerated, 
and replenish. And that's why God says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all of your heart. You see, Satan has put so much pressure against you that it's coming against your heart. You're trying to say, Pastor, what in the world is happening? What's going on with me? It's because he's trying to stop you from receiving your blessings. And that's why Pastor tell you, sometimes you got to walk through the house and just shout, shout to the Lord. Sing praises and hymns to the Lord. But then he says, the Lord has taken away your judgment. He has cast out your enemies. And so whatever judgment that has caused you to think that God does not love you, think that God has turned his face away, whatever has caused you to bring judgment even on you, you say, man, I used to think things would happen a little bit better than this at this particular age. God, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not messing with nobody. I'm not stealing, I'm not squandering, I'm not gossiping, I'm not backbiting, I'm not arguing with anyone, I'm just trying to be the best me that I can possibly be. See, Satan don't like that. He don't like that you have now taken a stand and realized that, you know what, I can't do what I used to do, but I got to make sure that everything is on the up and up with me. And that's why God says in verse 15 of Zephaniah chapter 3, he says, the Lord has taken your judgment. He has cast out your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. So when you begin to shout with the voice of triumph, you're shouting out the deadness that has come against you. You're shouting out what has caused you to decompose inside. You're shouting out and you're renewing and you're replenishing. You see, you can't keep your mouth closed and praise God. Now, I know you say, you know, in my mind I can talk to him. Yeah, you can. But at the same time, he wants you to cast out every thought, every stronghold that brings itself against the Lord Jesus. And so, in your mind, there's a battle going on. But Jesus is saying, give me praise. Sing, O Zion. Sing, O Israel. The Lord has taken away your, your judgment. He has cast out your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord, this, you shall see disaster no more. But watch this, I begin to read more. He said, in that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. So whatever is coming against you, whatever has tried to attack you, whatever is pulling you in a, in a situation, whatever has your mind thinking that God doesn't care, whatever has your body vexed and pain and doesn't look like no relief is in sight. Whatever's making you think, God, how come me? Lord, I'm doing the best I can. Lord, this should have happened 10 years ago, but now my body is not able to take this attack. Satan knows where your body is. Jesus knows where your body is. He knows what your health condition is. He knows what you're going through. He sees your mind. He says, yeah, but I need for you, he says, to sing with me with all of your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Oh yeah, I'm talking to you. He says, sing with all of your heart. Now, it doesn't matter if you can carry a tune or if it sounds like you're putting two cans together. It don't matter, but you're giving God the praise with the best that you have. That's all he wants. He wants all of you and he wants the best of you. But in that day it shall be said, do not fear. Zion, let not your hands be weak. Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God in your midst. The mighty one will say, he will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you in his love. So now there is a rage going on. There's a fire coming out of you. You're angry about some things. They try to figure out, Lord, where are you? I, I know you do it, Lord, because you did some things for me in the past. So I want you to understand this. When you begin to question, remind God of what he did to you before. Remind God of how he brought you out of some things before. Remind God, say, Lord, you brought me out of that car wreck. Lord, you brought me out of that sickness. Lord, you brought me away from that situation. I want to give you praise for that. But I want to give you praise because I know, God, that you love me. Because Ecclesiastes, verse 7, 20 through 21 says, There is not a just man on earth who does not and cannot sin. And also do not take everything to heart. That people say, lest you hear your servants cussing you, for many times you also in your own heart knows that even you have cussed others. And so Ecclesiastes 7.20 tells us that, look, all of us are going to sin. We are going to sin. 
But don't allow yourself to get caught up in the mindsets of people who's who's talking about you. Yeah, they're talking about you. Yeah, they're saying all kind of stuff. But he says, curse, he said, but many times you have come against people in your own heart. But don't worry about it. God says, I got you. But here, Romans 8 and 18 says, for I am considered that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be, be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. If God is for us, who can be against us, said verse 31, Romans 8 and 18. If God is for us, who can be against us? So what am I telling you now? God is saying, I'm ready to restore you. God is saying in, in verse 17, he will quiet you in his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So God is trying to tell you, I'm asking you to sing to me, but God says, I need to sing to you. Good grace. I will sing to you a joyful song. God says, he will rejoice over you. Then he says, I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly. Who are among you? To whom it reproaches, reproaches is a burden. He says, behold, at that time, he said, I will deal with all who afflicts you. So God says, I want you to start praising me. Because when you begin to sing, all of those that's afflicting you, he says, I'm getting ready to afflict them. He says, I will save the lame and gather those who was driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they was put to shame. Then he says, at that time, I will bring you back. And so God is telling us when we begin to praise, when we begin to shout with the voice of triumph, when you begin to put in your mind, I don't care what you say to me. I don't care what you try to do to me. I'm still going to love God. I'm still going to focus on God. Why? Because look what he brought me through. Look how he got me to where I'm at right now. I may not have everything, but I have something. And because of that, God has allowed this to happen to me. No, that accident didn't take me out. No, that sickness didn't kill me. No, my finances, yeah, it wasn't the best of finances, but I still got food in my refrigerator, and I still got the momentum to move like God has told me to move. He says, at that time I will gather you, and he says, then I will give you fame and praise among all the people of the earth. Thank you, God. Hear me now, hear me now, hear me now. Jesus is saying in Zephaniah uh, chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, when you begin to praise me, he said, at that time, I will bring you back. That means, remember I told you earlier that there's a decay happening in the spirit. And it's trying, the spirit is coming out, but the decay that's happening in the flesh as well is trying to keep you down. But when you begin to praise, he says, shout, O Jerusalem, sing praises to me, O Israel. He said, when you begin to shout, when you begin to praise, he said, at that time I will bring you back, even at the time I will gather you, and I will give you fame and praise among all the people of the earth when I return your captives before your eyes, said the Lord. When you begin to give God praise, you see, when you're sad, you see, when you sorrow, when things are so heavy against you, and you can't really understand why things is happening to you the way that it is, there is a sadness about you. It's hard to give God praise. Then, oh Lord, what am I going through? Why is this? Not? But when you get that favorite song in your mind, get that favorite song on your tongue, and begin to sing that favorite song. Oh, you might not be able to carry a tune in a bucket, but that's all right, because God inhabits the praises of his people. And when you begin to give God praise, when you begin to sing that song, I mean, whatever you are enunciating every word of that song, and whether you off key or not, you are giving really God the praise. Lord, I do love you. Lord, I thank you for who you are. Lord, I praise your name. Saints, it's time for us to stop allowing the fiery dots of Satan to hit us. And every time it hit us, we say, uh. Uh, uh, no, not no more. Begin to stand up. Hold up your faithful breast and let him know no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And I know it feels like the sail has been pulled out of you. I know that the wind underneath your wings feels like it's dissipating. And I know that that, that situation that you're going through is so horrendous. It's so horrendous. Pastor, this thing is heavy. Pastor, you just don't understand what I'm going through. Pastor, I just need God to look, and put, look upon me and help me through this situation. See, I don't know what you're going through. But God says he know. And he sent me tonight to tell you God has promised restoration. Good gracious of mine. He has promised 
restoration. And in his promise to you, in his promise to you, he said, I am going to help you out. I am going to work it out. He said, I am going to restore you. I am going to bring you out of this situation. God has promised us restoration. He says, I'm going to restore you. Heaven and earth shall pass away before his word does. Hebrews 6, 18, God said, he said, I swore on two immutable things. It is impossible for me to lie to you. So God can't lie to us. He can't lie. So if he say, I'm going to restore you, get yourself together and worry about, now, Lord, I'm ready to be restored. Restored in my body. Restored in my mind. Restored in my home. Restored in my finances. Restored, Lord. So that I can receive everything that you're trying to give me. Because when you begin to question if God is going to help you, you're coming against him. Now it has been said, don't question God. It's all right to question God. But don't challenge God. You see, sometimes in our quest to ask God a question... We go towards challenging God. And if those of you that's listening to me, if you had a child, and you tell that child to do something, and that child begins to question you with challenging you and challenging your authority, you are apt to come back at that child with force. Or you're apt to come back to that child with a strictness about you. Well, but if that child says, Mama, I don't understand what you just told me to do. Daddy, I don't quite understand. Now you will feel like you want to help that child because that child has displayed to you they don't understand. But when that child begins to question you to the fact that they're challenging you, now there's a strictness about you. Well, the same thing is with Jesus. When we begin to question God as if we are challenging him, we are out of our mindset of where we need to be with God. And God says, according to Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, he says, because of your iniquities, which is your bad habits, which is your sin, because of your iniquities, I have turned my face away from you. He said, I turned my face away from you. So if God has turned his face away from you, what can man do to help you? Nothing but try to give you advice and get yourself back in there and hear what God is saying about what you're going through. But God is a lovely God. He's a God that will strengthen us. He was God that will help us. He's a God that's looking out for us. He's a God that cares about everything that we're going through. So he sent me tonight. He said, tell my people that God is promising us respiration. He says, I'm going to restore my people. And I know you're going through a little situation right now. I know hard times is gripping your body and neck. And it feels like it's squeezing the life out of you. But shake it off. And the way to shake it off is you got to give God praise. Sing that song. Come on, sing that song. You know what? Make up a song. It don't matter. You giving God the praise. You loving on the Lord. Lord, I want to give you praise. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. Make up your own lyrics and just give God the praise. Because when praises go up, blessings come down. And it's like it's got you choked. It's like you got you where you can't hardly sing. You can't hardly breathe. It's like somebody got a vice grip on your neck and is trying to tell you to change your voice. And your voice begins to change. Why? Because that demon is trying to suffocate you. And that demon is trying to make you think, what you doing? Who you think you are? You belong to me. Come on, saints. Take you back. Say it again, pastor. Take you back. This is a hostile takeover. You don't go in there with Satan, can I please have me back? No, this is a hostile takeover. You got the guns blazing. You got the fist up. You got yourself rigid. You got the armor vest on. Take you back. Why? Because that demon has stolen the joy from you. He has stolen everything from you. How do I know that? Because you're questioning your very maker. You're trying to say, God, when are you going to help me? God, when are you going to work it out? God, I need this. God, I need that. He has stolen your joy. He has stolen your drive. He has stolen your perseverance. He has stolen stuff so much. That's why the Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So when your head is down and you can't understand, how am I going to get out of this situation? I don't care if you owe $50,000 somewhere. 
Guess what? Your God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But the demon has said, you, you owe that much? Ain't nothing good going to happen to you. They're going to take this. They're going to take that. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. And then you said, oh, they're going to take this. Oh, uh, they're going to take that. Uh. It's like you're trying to, oh, uh, you know what? But when you say, let them take it. For God I live and for God I die. Because if they take that, he's going to give me better. If they take this from me, he's going to restore me anyhow. If they take that from me, he's going to give me much more than I ever had from the beginning. So take it if you desire. Guess what? If you take it, that means it didn't belong to me anyhow. And God is going to give me. Because the Bible says, God says, whatsoever in his hand, no man shall be able to pluck it out. So if God has placed this into your hand, the job, he has placed the car, he has placed the house, he has placed your finances. What God has in his hand, no man shall be able to pluck it out. No demon shall be able to pluck it out. So what you're going through is just a smoke screen to get you to think that God doesn't care. But he said, tell them, my son, I am going to restore them. God says he's going to restore you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how things are coming at you. But I do know that the God you serve, he's going to restore you. He will. He did me. He'll do you. He said, I will restore you. He said, I will work it out. He said, I will give you a heart desire. Don't know what you're going through. That's between you and God. Unless you call pastor, we'll touch and agree and pray. But until then, I'm praying for you. Till then, I'm standing in the gap with you. Till then, we're going to continue to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Why? Because he sent me here tonight to tell you. He says, I am going to restore my people. But watch this, saints. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He said... Uh, Zephaniah, the third chapter, verse 19, he says, Behold, at that time I will deal, I will deal with all who afflicts you. So now, when you begin to sing praises, when you begin to give God the praise, he says, Behold, at that time, when you're giving me praise, he says, Behold, at that time I will deal with all who afflicts you. So it doesn't matter who's coming at you, it matters how you giving God praise. Say it again, Pastor. It doesn't matter what's coming against you or who's coming against you. That part doesn't matter. But what does matter is how are you giving your God praise? Because he says, I will save the lame. So some of us, we may be a little lame in our thought process, a little lame in how our spiritual walk with God. And what do I mean by lame? Lame simply means that you're not at your full potential of your bodily movement, be it through your hands, your arms, your fingers, or your mind. You're not at the fullness of your thought process, but you're not at the fullness of your thought process. And so if you're laying like that, it's just that means that you're not at the fullness of your thought process or your movements of your limb. So God says, I will save you. I'm going to save the lame. Then he says, and gather those who was driven out. So everybody that was in your circle that begin to push away, begin to move away, begin to do things that was not of God. God pushed them away from you. But the ones that was there to help you, that became manipulated by Satan, God says, I will appoint them. He said, I will gather those who was driven out. So in Jerusalem, the ones that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those mean people, they began to come against the people of Jerusalem. It drove them out. It drove them out. See, what was happening was they was trying to take over Jerusalem. But he sent Zephaniah in there. And his mission were to inform the people to move away from sin and receive a restoration of God. So a, a, a revival took place that produces an out change, an out, an out outcome and an out change. It was in his and his and his uh, mission, Zephaniah three four chapters. His mission were to just to tell the people that the downfall of Judah, as well as God's wrath for the uh, the Palestinians and other pagan uh, religions of Judah, he was trying to tell them, "Hey, come on, you got to get away from that because everything about what you're serving is going to fall down. Everything about what you're serving is not going to ante up." 
Because if it's not that of God and it's a pagan God, it has no power, no how. You have more power than the God that you're serving because it's a pagan God. So he was trying to tell them, hey, I want to introduce you to this real God. This real God that will restore you. This real God that will help you. This real God that will lift you up regardless as to what you're going through. This real God that sees through the looking glass of why you're crying. He sees through the looking glass of how you're just heartbroken. He sees through the looking glass of what's gotten you so beat down. You know what? And the sad part about it is you beat down and don't nobody know it. You beat down and don't nobody know it. You beat down. But don't nobody know it. Why? Because you're not telling everybody your story. You're not telling everybody what you're going through. You're trying to keep people out of your business because it's between you and God. But God is wanting you to understand this. I got you. I got you. And what you're going through, it is nobody else's business but yours and mine. So the thing that I love about God, you can tell him your innermost thoughts. Your innermost thoughts. And he will not report your business to somebody else. You can tell God your innermost thoughts. He won't even tell that to a pastor. A pastor is, he finds shepherds after his own heart. But guess what? That ain't none of my business. So God won't tell me unless there's something that I need to confront you about and help you to fix it. But Deuteronomy 29 and 29 tells us that God has secrets that he don't even allow you and I to, to get. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. God has secrets about all of us that he doesn't even share with us. So that's why he says in Hebrews 10 and verse 35, lose not your confidence in me, which is going to bring great rewards and recompense. Oh Lord, we serve an awesome God. We serve a right now God that's going to bless us, that's going to restore us. Come on now. I come tonight to encourage you. I don't know what you're going through, but you do. But I know that the God that we serve, he says, tell them I'm ready to restore. Tell them I'm ready to fix their situation. Tell them I'm ready to help them. Tell them just keep praying to me. Tell them just start singing more to me. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. I do love them. He says, I love those that has a broken heart and a contrite spirit. He says, I know I love you because I was there for you when everything broke loose. I was there for you when nobody else cared about you. I was there for you to help you out of that last situation. I was there for you when sickness tried to take you out. I was there for you when your child didn't care nothing about you. I was there for you when you was drunk off this, high off that, and didn't know where you was going or coming. I was there for you when that person you thought was there to protect you but put their hands on you in the wrong way. He says, I was there for you. All of these things God said I was there for you. What makes you think now what you're going through, he won't be be there for you. The devil is a liar. Don't let him steal your joy. Don't let him take nothing else from you, but keep your eyes to the hills and begin to give God praise. Worship. He says, sing, O Zion. Sing, O Judah. Sing, Jerusalem. Sing, O daughter of Zion. God wants us to begin to sing. The reason why he wants us to sing because when you open up your mouth, when you open up your mouth, when you open up your mouth, you begin to allow some things to go into the atmosphere. Because he said, Romans 10 and verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. So you got to open up your mouth in order to even come to be saved by God. So he said, if you, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and that he has raised Jesus from the dead, he said, and believe in your heart. He says, you shall be saved. So see, it's with your mouth that you can get release on what's coming against you. It's with your mouth that you can get release on what's been trying to drown you, what's been trying to knock you out, what's been trying to knock you out of that box. It's with your mouth. Pastor, I'm in so much pain, I can't even sing. Well, can you talk? If you can talk, you can sing. If you can talk, you can sing. Pastor, you just don't know. I'm hurting everywhere. If you can talk, you can sing. And if you can sing, you're going to break some yokes tonight off of your body. The Bible says that scales are going to begin to fall from your eyes. And it doesn't mean like fish scales. It means that things that's been blinding you like a horse 
that got you blinded. But when they begin to remove, you can begin to get your peripheral vision. It's going to be able to see things you've never seen before. Begin to recognize people like you've never seen them before. Begin to recognize incidents and situations and things that's coming to you like never before. He says, I'm going to show you me even the more. And when God begins to show you him, he says, harden not your heart when you hear my voice coming to you because I'm ready to restore you, but you got to know that it's me talking to you. You got to know that I'm moving you. You got to know that I'm protecting you. You got to know that I care about you. Harden not your heart when you hear the sound of my voice. And hear me now, saints. God says, when I talk to you, don't be afraid to move when I say move. God says, when I talk, I shut that He said, when I talk to you, he says, don't be afraid to move when I'm telling you to move because I'm moving you strategically because I'm going before you already and make the crooked path straight. I've already given you people that's waiting on you to move when I'm telling you to move so that I can give you your heart desire. There is a loan waiting for you. There is a car waiting for you. There is a house waiting for you. There is a promotion waiting for you. There is peace on your job waiting for you. There is friends that's going to be there for real friends waiting for you. But you got to get lined up. You got to get that decay out of you. You got to begin to praise. You got to give God glory. There is a financial blessing waiting on you. God says, I'm ready to restore them. But they got to understand, I am God. I made the world. I was here when there was nothing else. He said, I spoke this thing into existence. God never put his hands to put in this world to existence. He began to speak and he saw. Speak and he saw. Speak and he saw. So now he's getting ready to speak to you and he's getting ready to see what's coming to get you. See what's working out for you. And he's beginning to speak and then you're going to watch things manifest in you. Satan don't want you to watch and see nothing but devastated. Watch and see nothing but hurt, harm, or danger. Watch and see nothing. Lord, when you going to fix this? Lord, when you, Lord, we're in the 11th hour. At the 12th hour, it's going to be doomsday. Lord, when you going to? He don't show up when you want him to, but he always show up on time. Got to mighty be more careful. Yeah, I dated myself on that one, didn't I? Got to mighty be more careful. You got to understand that God is going to work it out for you. He is going to restore. He is going to bless you. But he just just need you to get your mind on him. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the glory. Lord, I thank you. You know what? I don't know the lyrics to this whole song, but there's a song that says, I just say yes. If you just say yes, you lead the way. Yeah, that song right there. I don't know who sing it. I don't know who sing it, but I just keep hearing that song in my head. I, if I would just say yes, just say yes. I will say yes. And you know what? I keep wanting to give God the praise. And so today at work sites, I was walking through the building and I was just saying, yes, Lord. Whatever you want out of me, yes, Lord. Whatever you want me to say, yes, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, yes, Lord. Because when you begin to say, give God the praise, when you begin to say, yes, Lord, then watch how he begin to restore upon you. Just say yes, Lord. I don't know the song, but just say yes, Lord. I don't know what he's trying to tell me, but just say yes, Lord. He says, harden not your heart when you hear the sound of the voice of me just say yes lord i will do it just say yes satan says if you do it we're gonna come against you just say yes lord you, they don't lord they didn't even approve the loan that they, they said they was gonna give to me just say yes lord i thought i had it made but seems like the everything has been pulled away from me just say yes because when you begin to say yes lord you lead the way. Yes, Lord, you lead the way. And when you begin to give God the praise, and watch this, when you pray a fervent prayer, when you pray earnestly, see, when you pray earnestly, that means you pray like you ain't got nothing else left. That means you're praying like that nothing else matter. When you begin to pray earnestly, and when you begin to pray strong from your heart, this is you saying, Lord God, I'm tired of what's coming against me. Lord God, help me out of this situation. Watch this. In the book of Matthew, in the 18th chapter, he said, Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, it's loose in heaven. So now, saints, in the midst of you saying yes, I want you to put this lyric in. 
Bind up everything, God, that's coming against me. Bind up everything, God, that's trying to take me out. Bind up everything, God, that has his hands on me. And now he says, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. So now I want you to loose love, happiness, peace, favor, mercy, self-control, financial stability. My children is safe. My home is safe. My house is safe. I shall get sleep tonight. You got to bind and release. Bind and release. Bind and release. Matthews 18 and 19. You got to bind and release. And when you begin to bind and release, guess what? You don't have time to be sad because you are working on something and you are on a mission. You're working on something and your mission. And when your mission I'm just trying to look at the comments, thanks. I'm sorry. Uh, and when you're on the mission like that, God. Okay, Brian Courtney Wilson. Brian Courtney Wilson. I'll say yes, you lead the way, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good looking out, first lady. He going to make me learn to deliver. Because I was walking through the job today, and I was just saying yes. And he was downloading saying, and when I begin to ask God, I, God, I need, I need, Lord, I need more people added to what I was trying to do. Here come a lady knocking on the door, and she came in. She said, hey, I got this situation, but I know that you can help me. And I was saying, yes, Lord, I have just asked for help, and you sent it to me. Haven't seen this woman since COVID. But he said, yes, Lord, you gave it to me. What's happening, saints? When you say yes, when you begin to praise God, when you begin to open up your eyes and say yes, God will fulfill your yes. He will fulfill your yes. Brian Courtney Wilson, he's saying yes. I will say yes. You lead the way. See, saints, get out of your way. Get out of your way. Get out of your way. You're in your way. Get out of your way so that God can bless you. Get out of your way so that God can bless you. Some of your downfalls is happening because you're in your way. You're trying to put your human wisdom into God's divine revelation. Get out of your way so that God can bless you. God has opened up people. God has strengthened organizations. And God has allowed a lot to come in your direction so that you can be blessed. But you're in your own way because you're trying to use your human wisdom. But hear me now. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not into your own understanding, but in all thy ways he shall direct your path. You might not see it now. God, you might not see it now. But I just say yes. That's Brian Courtney with Just say yes. I kept hearing that song in my spirit today. And I kept saying, thank you, Lord. I say yes. And that woman came to assist me to do the things that I've been trying to do, saints. I'm telling you, when you begin to say yes, you're going to open up an avenue in you that God is going to be able to use. And the song says, I may not see it now, but I want you to understand, if you give God the praise, if you stay strong, if you begin to realize that there's nothing else that matters to you, not your wife, not your husband, not your child, not that good, that best dog that you got, none of that matters because there's something in you that needs to be released, something in you that needs to be regenerated, there's something in you that needs to be replenished. And you can't help somebody else if you're broken. You can't be there for somebody else if you're broken. So I want you to shake you loose. And I said earlier, get out of your way. Stop thinking of human wisdom to fix your situation. But just let God be God. Look, saints, we got to stop dumbing down God. We got to stop dumbing down God. To think that because he hadn't moved, he might not care. He don't have the power. He's not listening where is God? And so God will help us if I do this. And he might help us if I do that. But your thought process is, does God really care what I'm going through? Saints, I want you to understand this. <laughs> we serve a God that is so powerful. He can bless everybody at the same time if he wanted to. That's how bad he is. That's how bad he is. But God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we begin to pray, when we begin to just say yes, when we begin to give God all of us, oh, it doesn't look like no rhyme or reason that you can give God all of you. You said, Pastor, how do I give God all 
of me. Pastor, you keep talking about give God all of me. Pastor, I, I pray. Pastor, I read the Bible. I'm not hurting nobody. How do I give God all of me? Let me help you with that. Now, I'm glad you asked. Anybody that you have talked to for more than 10 minutes, if they don't know that you are a woman or man of God, you have an issue. Anybody that you have talked to over 10 minutes and they don't know that you are a man or woman of God, you have a problem. Why you say that, Pastor? Doesn't matter if you're talking to a creditor. Doesn't matter if you're talking to mama. Doesn't matter if you're talking to daddy. Doesn't matter if you're talking to that store clerk. There's something about you that will always acknowledge God in your life. There's something about you that will always acknowledge God. When you finish a transact, you say, uh, 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 you have a blessed day because we serve an awesome God. There's something about you that's going to, to announce God. Because hear me now, anybody that you love, anything that you love, anything that you want to be around, you're going to always acknowledge it in your conversation. Anybody that you love, your boyfriend, your husband, whoever, whoever, you're going to say, my husband said this, my wife said that, my child is doing this. If you talk to somebody more than 10 minutes, what you love is always going to come up out of you. If your child is doing great in college, you can say, you know what, my child is doing this. Ain't nobody talking about no college, but you're going to bring your child up. Ain't nobody talking about racing no car, but you're going to bring your son up. Ain't nobody talking about this, but you're going to bring, why? Because that's what you love. It's on the forefront of your mind. So if you're talking to someone for more than 10 minutes and you have said nothing about God, nothing about God, guess what? Do you really love him? But they do know about your child. They do know about your husband. They do know about your wife because you've spoken it. So what am I trying to tell you? We got to reprogram this thing. We got to refocus this thing. We got to get this thing in motion that says, hey, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and he will. If I talk to you for 15 minutes, you might get tired of me. Why? Because I'm going to tell you how God blessed me. He brought me from COVID-19. He brought me from COVID pneumonia. Some people say, I'm tired of hearing about that. You can be tired all you want to, but I know the struggle that I've been through. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you love the Lord, people can get mad at you, get tired of hearing about you, but you know if it had not been for God on your side, there's no way you would still be going through what you're going through and still be here to talk about it. Thank you, God. It may not be COVID, but it could have been another sickness. It could have been depression. It could have been a suicidal thought. It could have been you just said, Lord, I just quit. I don't want this no more. It could have been a spiritual death. It could have been whatever. It, been. it took those pills and said, you know what? I'm getting ready to dial out because I don't want this no more. And take those pills and took that alcohol and says, I'm going to drink myself till I don't return. There's so much that we can put out there, that we can talk about. But I want you to begin to talk about your Lord and Savior. Lord, thank you that you pulled me out of this situation. And so, the way to do that, saints, is hit this old boy now. He's trying to educate you. God sent me tonight to tell you, I promise to restore you. In Zephaniah, the third chapter of Zephaniah, he said, not only will I restore you, he said, but I will bring fame, fame and praises among all the people of the earth. For you. So what he's saying is, uh, 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 Isaiah 61 chapter tells us that for your shame, he's going to give you a double portion. He's going to give you a double portion of everything that you lost. So he's saying here, uh, for I will give you fame and praises among all the people of the earth. When I return your captives before your eyes, say the Lord. He says, whatever has been taken from you, from Satan, it has been captured from you. He said, I'm bringing it back to you. I don't know about you, saints, but I've lost a lot in my life. And if God was to bring that back to me, woo -wee, I might get on somebody's cruise ship for a minute and just relax. But because we serve an awesome God, because we love the Lord, all I want you to do is just simply say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Saints, I'm telling you, he did that for me today as I was singing and walking through my job. It, the Spirit just came over me. Just say yes. Just say yes. And he said, you might not see it now. What's the, uh, Brian Courtney's word said, you might not see it now, but just say yes. Saints, hear me tonight. Just say yes. And the very thing that I was praying for in about maybe 30 minutes prior to that, and I was just saying yes, what I was praying for, 
come through the door. Oh my goodness, it came through the door. Sex, what am I telling you tonight? If you hear this old boy and he's trying to help you now, God says, I am going to restore you. I am going to help you. I am going to fix your situation. If you just say yes, he will bless you. He will work it out. I don't know what's going on with you, but whatever it is, my God will supply all of my needs. My God will protect you. He will do everything for you. He will. He will. He will. He will. He sent me here tonight to tell you that he will. And he said, not only will I do it, he says, but I'm going to love you. I'm going to love on you while I'm doing it. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that amazing? You feel good while blessings upon blessings is coming about you. You feel great while financial blessings is coming about you. You feel great when you get that phone call and says, hey, that loan that you was trying to get, well, you was trying to get 10000 but we had put it up to 50000 and you get all the increments of that if you want. Yeah, and, the, and the monthly payment is going to be to the point where you tell us how much you can afford per month. Good God Almighty, what have I said to you? We serve a God of strategy. He will give you your heart desire. So says John 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me and my word remain in you, I'll give you your heart desire. Whatever you desire, you put it to God and he will work it out for you because he says, I love the prosperities of my people. He says, I love to prosper you. He says, I love to prosper you. So because of that, saints, he says, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> Woo! You have not because you ask not or you ask amiss, which means that you asking it for wrong ideas. You asking it because you want a better car and you want to look better than the people at the job. So you say, Lord, I want to get a better car because I want to look better than them who drive their little nice car. But instead of saying that, say, Lord, I need a better car because I need to get to work on time. And I don't, I can't afford all of these maintenance payments. Lord, help me to get out of this car because it's robbing my finances. That's why you should want that new car, not to ask for it in a miss. Good God Almighty, I don't say something then. But I want you to understand, God loves us. He cares for us. He's working it out for us. In the name of Jesus. And I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to tell you one last thing before uh, I move out here. God says that not only will I bless you, not only will I help you, not only will I work it out for you. He said, but I want you to see me do this. I want you to see me do this. I want you to, I want you to feel how I'm going to do this. So hear me now. There's going to be a point of time in the midst of your travel to get where God is trying to take you that he's going to put you to sleep. And while you are asleep, He's going to show you where he's trying to take you. <laughs> he's going to show you where he's trying to take you. And in this particular dream, you're going to see marvelous things. You're going to see marvelous wonders. And it's almost like you're already there. And I know some of you has probably had this already. But there's so much going on that you're going to be able to see marvelous things. And when you wake up, it's going to feel like you're still there. But you're now in reality because God is ready to bless you so much. And the reason why he's going to allow this vision, the reason why he's going to allow this vision, and I know I said dream, but the reason why he's going to allow this vision so he can give you confidence knowing that if you visualize it, you can make it happen. If you visualize it, it's going to work out for you. If you could just visualize, see, some of you are like me. I like to put my hands on things. I like to be able to see it. You know, computers kind of beat me down a little bit, but I, if I put my hands on it, I can make it happen. So I'll pen and ink something quick before I get on that computer. That's how I am. But either way, God will bless me to be able to do the things I need to do on a computer. So God will bless you. And so now the dream that you have, it, it looks so vivid. Wow. It's like you're still there. But what God has done is build up your confidence. And hear me now. After you've had that dream and after it has touched you in a way, you're going to tell somebody about what you've dreamt. You're going to tell somebody about how you felt about that dream. Because God began to show you things. He began to work it out for you. He began to show you where he's trying to take you. And you can't hold that in your bosom. You can't hold that in your chest. That's why I'm telling you, if you love the Lord and you talk to somebody for 10 minutes, there is no way you can't talk about the goodness of Jesus. There is no way you can't say that if the Lord had not been on my side. There is no way that you cannot acknowledge God in your conversation. 
You can't do it if you truly love God. I don't care if you're talking about a banker. I don't care if you're trying to put a loan together. I don't care if you're trying to talk to the people about the car. You're going to say something about what you love. Tomorrow, I want you to try that. Tomorrow, I want you to take me at my word. I want you to talk to someone for 10 minutes. And after that, I want you to walk away and see if you said anything about the love of God in that conversation. I don't care if you talk to your supervisor or the owner of the business. See if you said anything about God in your situation. Saints, God said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. What am I saying to you? He says you are a peculiar nation, which means you're strange. You are a royal priesthood, which means God has your back. Sex, God wants to do it for you. He told me tonight to tell my people. He says, I am going to restore them of everything. He says, I'm going to restore them of everything. And in so doing, sex, keep your head up. Keep your head up. And just say yes. Just say yes, Lord. I do it. And he's going to give you so much. Then he says, when I give you this, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. In other words, God is going to bless you to give to someone. And that's between you and that person and not you and the world. He says, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. He says, I'm going to bless you where you can give to someone and the right hand will never know. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, listen. Uh, she done gave me the thumbs that it's time for me to close it out in the name of Jesus. Listen, I always end it with this. I have to because this is what the Lord has orchestrated. If you want to sow a seed or if you want to donate to Embrace Hope International, you can do it through the phone that you're looking at right now. You can say 77977. You begin to say 77977. And then where you would put the message in, you would put E-H give. And if you would give and sow a seed, you're sowing the seed into fertile ground. And when you sow a seed into fertile ground, God says, now expect me to create a harvest in you. You know what, sex? There was a season ago, uh, we was having a service. And God told me to tell the people, if you sow your best seed tonight, he said, I will bless you tremendously. And some of the people did it. And they could keep coming back to me saying, Pastor, God truly blessed me. And I don't know if my little sister is on here tonight, but she did it. She took me at my word. And not only did God bless her, but God gave her promotion on her job and gave her more money. And now he is blessing her tremendously through her finances. She took me at that word. And God is blessing her. So now I'm telling you, saints, she keeps money in her pocket. Thank you, Lord. But I'm telling you that I'm not giving you something that's erroneous. I'm giving you something that would work. If you sow a seed in the ministry, or if you just pay your tithes and your offer to the ministry, you're sowing it in fertile ground, and God will reimburse you a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. So I thank you, God, for who you are, for what you've done, and how you're going to bless. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to leave that alone, because I want you to be able to do it on your own. Because the pastor always sowed the seed. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff I'm trying to get my hands on and into. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So now, 77977. And go to EH Give. And on your internet, it'll give you to a link. And then you begin, you'll begin. be able to do that. In the name of Jesus. Listen, go into prayer with me as we begin to leave. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I thank you for who you are. Lord, I thank you for that word that you're going to restore us tonight. I thank you for that word that you're going to bless us tonight. I thank you, Lord, that whatever has died inside of us, that shout, that praise will rejuvenate, it will replenish, and it will restore right now in the name of Jesus. God, your people now is saying, yes, Lord. And because they're saying, yes, Lord, I don't know where they are, but you do, God. And because they're saying, yes, God, move towards them, God. Strengthen them like never before. Be that God that they were. Be that God that you were to them when they first got saved, God, that you was talking to them. You was strengthening them. You was helping them, God. You was there with them. And they felt loved by it. And circumstances and situations, God, has zapped some of that love. But God, I'm asking you tonight, hear from me, God. Replenish that love. In the name of Jesus, God, replenish that field. In the name of Jesus, God, God, they just say yes. They want to hear from you, God. They want to hear about you. Just say yes, God. They're just saying yes. 
because there's some things about them, God, that if they say yes tonight, they're going to be blessed by you. I believe that, God. You told me to say it. It's said and it's done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Just say yes. And God says, I promise to restore you. Just say yes. He said, and I promise to restore you in the name of Jesus. That's the God that we serve, saints. You might not see it now. You might not see it just this moment. Say yes. Just say yes, Lord. He'll restore you. Just say yes, Lord. He'll restore you. Just say yes, Lord. He'll restore you.